Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS show that just happens to come out around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on the main sites. This is an EPL breakdown for Match Week 35, Saturday, April 20th, 2019. I don't want to waste too much time into this. Let's jump right into this right away. You'll notice that this isn't really a very attractive slate, so if you're finding this weekend that you may not want to play super heavy, I do fully support that notion. There's no huge names, there's no big teams, so for the most part, a lot of this is going to be really random, and unless you really know the sport, you may find a lot of struggles this weekend trying to make cards. So yeah, let's just jump into this right away. First game of the slate, we have Fulham making the trip from London down south to play Bournemouth. Second game of the slate, we have Watford making the trip from London into Huddersfield to play Huddersfield Town. Leicester City making the trip into London to play West Ham in the third game of the slate. Fourth game, we have Brighton making the quick trip from the very South Shore to Wolverhampton to play Wolves. And the final game of the slate, we have Southampton making the complete trip right across the country, all the way from the very bottom of the south, all the way up north to Newcastle to play Newcastle United. So yeah, let's jump into this right away. First game on the slate, we have Fulham traveling to Bournemouth. So yeah, Fulham are the second worst team in the league. They did win their last game, uh, but it was their first win in their previous 10 games. Uh, they are statistically speaking, the worst away side in the league. They haven't won away yet this season, and they've lost 15 of their 17 away games. Fulham have conceded 44 goals in their 17 away games this season, and 11 of those 17 games had at least three total goals in them. So not only is Fulham bad, but they're really bad, and they're getting scored on by everyone. Now, Bournemouth are actually coming into this also in really bad form. They're winless in four straight games, but they did also win their last game. It was their first win in their four in the previous four, and they've won only two of their previous five. However, Bournemouth are a far better team when they are at home. They've lost only five of their 17 home games this season, and uh, four of those five uh, did come against top six sides. So basically, every home loss they've had this season was against a Manchester, uh, uh, one of the bigger London sides. You get the idea a really big time club so Bournemouth tend not to lose at home but at the same time they allow everything they allow crosses shots scoring chances the whole shebang so notely uh, this game should produce some goals for us so uh, to start off with Fulham uh, I'm not really interested in the goaltenders uh, last night I feel was more of an anomaly against Everton I did call a Fulham win which uh, was uh, fairly rewarding but at the same time I didn't use the keepers at all for good reason they're not very good and uh, they won't really see a solid chance for a clean sheet in either format so not interested there and a lot of that also has to do with the fact that their defenders since Simply aren't very good. Joe Bryan is acceptable for cash at 4.8k. I just think there's a lot better options, uh, whether cheaper, more expensive, doesn't really matter. Uh, when you're on Fulham away from home, there really isn't a whole lot of reason to pay for someone when they're not even getting a solid nine fantasy points on the regular. So yeah, uh, Cy or, excuse me, Cal Cyrus Christie was another wing back uh, that isn't really seeing a lot of time. I meant to click on, sorry, Callum Chambers, uh, who was once a cash lock uh, coming into 2019. His floor has completely fallen off. Even if he is playing in the midfield, do not play Callum Chambers anymore. Um, but yeah, jumping, uh, or excuse me, into the midfield, uh, it's tough. There really isn't a whole lot to look at here. I do like Ryan Sessegnon you know, in GPP, but he just doesn't have that much of a ceiling. Uh He's pushing double digits if he's lucky, so it's tough. You really need a crappy slate in order for him to pay off, but uh, yeah, sure is coming back from a virus. He's still not fully fit. There's just not a lot to look at. The only place you really should be looking on Fulham, and you really should be giving it a fair amount of attention, is uh, up front with uh, Ryan Babel and Mitrovic. You can go both as a stack if you want a GPP. Uh, I think Mitrovic makes a lot of sense for cash this slate. He's absolutely tearing things up uh, as of late, uh, putting more than enough fantasy points up without uh, a goal or an assist to to be fine in cash. And he's below 7K, so you're not really risking a whole lot here. So yeah, uh, make sure to get Mitrovic into your cash cards this slate. You will not uh, regret it uh, because he's just been doing everything you possibly need. And jumping over into Bournemouth, 
like I said, Bournemouth do allow a ton of everything. So on one hand, you could theoretically say uh, whichever keeper starts. I'm going to assume it's Begovic. Uh, if Begovic uh, would be GPP viable, except he has literally no defensive stacking options at all. So I'm not really interested in the Bournemouth keepers. More of a DFS take. Are they bad real life options? No, they're probably going to win. They have a shot at a clean sheet. The issue is that unless you take them all by yourself, uh, I'll buy himself, excuse me. There's no real options there. And whenever we get further into this slate and we start noticing other keepers have one to two defensive stacking options that are just as good, if not better, keeper options than the Bournemouth, um, yeah, I'm just not interested. They probably should concede. Now, into the defense, like I said, there's nothing really here. Um... They have no no real floor, no real ceiling. Like that's a five fantasy point ceiling without the clean sheet, and that's basically Adam Smith's best game of the season DFS wise. So yeah, I'm just not interested uh, at all in the back line. And then going in the midfield is still an issue. However, Ryan Fraser is someone you're going to want to lock in this late, either format 7.9k. I'll talk about the forwards here in a second, but the fact is Fulham are just so 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 bad. Uh, they allow tons of shots, tons of crosses. We should see both teams having decent floor. Uh, in this game so I have no issue uh, game stacking this for cash uh, not necessarily chasing a ceiling taking both Mitrovic and Ryan Frazier and hoping they get double digits isn't really that big of an ask at all considering both defenses now in terms of the rest of the Bournemouth midfields I'm not really interested in Brooks this late I was last late when he was five point whatever K but this slate, I'm just not interested from 7.6K, even against uh, the likes of Fulham. And the same can be said for Stanislas, who still isn't seeing enough minutes to really be worthwhile. Now, up front is really where I want to talk about, much like Fulham. The Bournemouth forwards are extremely crucial to your builds this slate. And GPP, Callum Wilson, and Ryan Frazier uh, do lead the league as the most uh, valuable stack, uh, salary ignored. They've just combined for the most goals in the league. So I don't hate that in GPP, but... If I'm looking anywhere uh, in GPP this slate for Bournemouth, I'm actually going to try. See, my issue is this last slate, Ryan Frazier and Cal Wilson went off, like complete ham show. Everyone should be jumping on that ownership. And if that does happen, uh, which I expect it to, I'm going to be jumping on Josh King and GPP instead. So uh, my cash is Ryan Frazier. My GPP is either Ryan Frazier and Callum Wilson or Josh King just as a standalone. You can use Ryan Frazier and Josh King, but they just aren't as viable as Ryan Frazier and Callum Wilson. So if you're going to pair, you may as well just take the Callum Wilson with them. But uh, yeah, Josh King, the reason I'm bringing this up, Josh King has gotten basically all of his goals this season at home and he scored nine goals uh this season at home so i i really don't mind josh king at home it's where he scores his goals 6.7k isn't a big ass going up against the likes of fulham who should just be allowing lots of different stuff so yeah uh ryan fraser lock either format uh and either pair him with one or the other in gpp or just take josh king by himself in gpp that's the bournemouth take um it's tough to say how this game could should go Bournemouth have been in really bad form, so I do think Fulham can score. I'm going to say a final score to Bournemouth. Uh, no, you know what? Bournemouth 3, Fulham 1. Uh, Bournemouth are going to score more than two goals again this game. Um, and uh, jump in some Ryan Fraser. I think that makes the most sense. And Mitrovic on the other side. So, yeah, let's say a 3-1 Bournemouth final. Next game on the slate, we have Watford traveling to Huddersfield. So, Watford... Um, should win this game. Let's just start off the hop here. Huddersfield are the worst team in the league following up from Fulham. Huddersfield are the worst team in the league. They were relegated three or four games ago now. Like They they are not English Premier League worthy, uh, especially this season. So, yeah, let's start with Watford. Um, they are coming into this uh, not in great form. Uh, they've lost four of the previous six, but all four of their losses did come against big six sides. Uh they uh, haven't actually lost to anyone outside the big six yet this calendar year. Now, that's pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, they haven't lost to anyone that wasn't a Manchester, a Chelsea, an Arsenal. You get the idea. So... Watford actually find themselves fairly high up on the table. Now, if you haven't been following English Premier League this season very much, the long story short is it's very, 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 very likely at this point that next season, 
England will have another team to go into European competition. So it varies every year. Sometimes they'll get six teams. Sometimes they'll get seven teams, depending how their domestic cup bids. Uh, sometimes there's automatic uh, sent to European competition. So, yeah, long story short, they're looking at another uh European team this season so there should be seven teams the top seven teams instead of the top six this season top seven teams will be qualifying for European competitions so that seven spot this season is extra valuable compared to other seasons and we have teams like Watford Leicester and Wolves all in action this slate all vying for that seventh spot so yeah um Watford aren't a bad team. That's what I'm really trying to get at here. They've had some inconsistent results. They haven't been great lately, but like I said, they, they haven't lost anyone outside the big six so far this calendar year. Uh, and they have won three of their five. Uh, if you consider all the games uh, that uh, take out all the top six games, they've won three of their five previous away games. So, yeah, th this isn't a team to sleep on, especially this slate against a, a team like Huddersfield because I think a lot of people will be sleeping on Watford. And to for, further that, Huddersfield, worst team in the league. They've lost six straight. They've lost an insane, absolutely massive 26 of their 34 games this season. They've lost 13 of their 17 home games this season, winning only two of those 17 home games. And um, only six goals in their previous 10 games. So yeah, uh, I think a safe spot to start this slate is with Ben Foster, 5.4K, Casher, GPP, lock him in, really safe bet. Now to second that, one of the reasons Ben Foster is so awesome, and to counter that back with Begovic before, Foster has two world-class DFS options for wingbacks here, whether it's Jan Matt or Messina. Um, it's tough. I think I'd probably go spend up on Jan Matt just because they have identical floor, but Jan Matt has a legit top end ceiling. He can score goals. He shoots. He does it all. Messina is more of a defensive oriented peripheral kind of statistics guy where, uh, Jan Matt is definitely cash viable. So yeah, uh, Foster, Jan Matt cash, all three, uh, Foster, Messina and Jan Matt and GPP. Or just take either Janmat or Messina uh, in either format. I prefer Janmat, though. And then going into the midfield, uh, it's actually a little bit interesting. Both Pereira and Decore. See, the big issue with Watford is they aren't really a good DFS side. A lot of that has to do with, one, they don't convert very well. Outside of their defense, they don't convert very well to DFS scoring. And two... Uh, their minutes are atrocious. Across the board, all their big players come off the field at important times. Whether it's Pereira and De and uh, Delefeu, both this late, not healthy fully, but both going to play. So both should be coming off early. Troy Deeney's out. So, uh, yeah. I think Will Hughes is in play here at 4.6K. He should see 90 minutes, and I really don't hate that against a team like Huddersfield. Uh, yeah, lock some Will Hughes into some GPP this slate. I really, really, really like it a lot. Cash, I'm not so set because I think there's a lot better options. But if you're looking for a little bit of risk and spend down in cash, I have no issue with Will Hughes this slate. There's just too many injuries on Watford for them to... Uh, logically or rationally sub him out it probably will happen but i see a lot more reason than not to this slate and uh to use him than not this slate excuse me and then up front like i said andre gray is just too expensive there i said it 8.2k he's not an 8.2 caliber player it doesn't matter if he's playing me uh <laughs> it, it really does not matter he's not worth 8.2k uh chances are he's coming off uh, for what, what one of Delafeu or uh, Pereira. So yeah, um, jumping over to Huddersfield now. There's really only two places to look this slate. Uh, first is definitely not goaltender. Chris Lowe. So um, the thing with Chris Lowe is he's one of the more cash viable defenders of this slate from 4.5K. Now... You can do this, what I have on the board here right now. I really don't recommend it. Uh, sorry, let me get Andre Gray out. Uh, because you're basically all eggs in the first two games of the slate. And that's just, it, it just isn't the most logical process when you have a five-game slate. Even with all the crappy names and teams. So, yeah, um, I don't mind that. Uh, I think I would rather take either Chris Lowe 
or the Watford defense in cash. I don't think I'd rather do together. And this is kind of the issue going throughout this slate is that a lot of these games stack together in the same format. So I'm not really excited about taking Huddersfield and Watford in the same defensive stack in cash. But in terms of um, cash viable, these three guys here are super, super cash viable. So yeah, uh, you'll have to make your decision through your builds there. Uh I'd probably go Jan or excuse me, low in cash and the Watford side and GPP just because it stacks better and Jan and low is cheaper. Uh, but I think there's a lot more ceiling to be had that's still cash viable as well. So yeah, it's tough. I'll leave that up to you guys. But um, the only other option for Huddersfield is Aaron Moy, 7.6K. Too expensive in my opinion. Uh, against Watford, I think there's a lot better midfield options for cash or GPP. So yeah, uh, he, he is viable, but just not where I'm looking this slate. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say here. Watford, like I said, should really win this uh, probably by two goals. And I'll be really surprised if Huddersfield score at all. So what I will say is, uh, Watford 2, Huddersfield nil. No. I think that's a fairly uh, respectable final score. So yeah, Watford 2, Huddersfield nothing. Next game on the slate, we have Leicester traveling to West Ham. And I'm just going to off the hop right now say it. So if you are watching and uh, you're kind of pressed for time, fade this game. I said it, it's done, it's over. Fade this game. It's going to have ownership, low ceilings, low floors, just really unattractive across the board. Now, I will break it down because they still do have viable options here. But in terms of like this slate, you can literally skip over this game and you're totally fine. There, I said it. Leicester has lost uh, their last game, uh, but they are coming into this in really good form, winning four of the previous five and five of the previous seven. They are under new management with Brendan Rodgers, and they are playing really well under Rodgers. Uh, they've won back-to-back -back away games, uh, which has been a really big staple for them under Rodgers. Their away record has really improved. They've uh, In Leicester games this season, both teams have scored in uh, five of the previous five games, and in four of the previous five games, or excuse me, away games, away games. Uh, Leicester, <laughs> Leicester away games, both teams have scored in their previous five ga away games, and in four of those five away games, there was more than three and a half total goals. So yeah, uh, that means basically every one of their previous games has finished 2-1 or better. That's a, a, a way to look at it. Uh, and they've scored in eight straight previous away games. So Leicester really should score here. And um, the, the issue is, uh, will they win? And West Ham has come in this in really bad form. All season, they've been incredibly inconsistent. They've lost three straight in four of their previous five. Uh, however, they are insanely better away, or excuse me, at home than away. They've lost only one of their previous five home games, winning three of their previous four as well. And uh, in... Uh, Nine of their previous ten, uh, West Ham have scored, and there's been two uh, more than two total goals in their home games. So we can kind of, as soon as West Ham goes away, we can think they're not going to score, and it's going to be a low-scoring game. As soon as West Ham's at home, we can think they're probably going to score, and it's probably still going to be a high-scoring game because neither team is really necessarily prolific in scoring a ton of goals. So. I can say off the hop, this is probably going to be a 1-1-2-1 one, one, one game. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into this, Lester. If they don't concede, Smeichel is an incredible GPP play because he has such excellent defensive options. Is he really a DFS option? Not, or excuse me, real life option? Not really, not really at all. Is he a DFS option? Incredible. His his defenders are just so awesome to stack with. So I don't mind uh, Smeichel GPP with the defensive stack. I think that does make a lot of sense this slate. And then going into the midfield, I'm just not interested in James Madison for 9.3K. Um, I'll be 100% frank, really frank about this. I don't like what DraftKings did this slate. Uh, I think with... The crappy teams across the board, uh, they really dropped the pricing here in James Madison. He, he's good, don't get me wrong, but he's not 1.2K better than Matt Ritchie. He isn't in in any stretch of the imagination. Now, when you also consider it's Leicester away, Leicester is playing West Ham, West Ham at home, Leicester at home playing Leicester, 
Uh, there's just so many reasons not to play to pay up 9.3k this late for James Madison. Is he a bad play or player? No. Is he worth 9.3k this late? No. Take for what you will. Uh, so you can still play him. It's just there's so many reasons not to play him from 9.3k this late. Uh, just way too expensive. Way too expensive. Uh, now, Tealman's and GPP isn't a bad idea. The issue is that his ceiling just isn't very good. Um, so, yeah, you're really looking at it like a 2.5 to 2.8 times salary ceiling on Tealman's at the absolute best. And that's just not where I'm looking to play this late 7.3K. I just think there's better options, especially with Albright and coming back to health. Now, the, the real consideration for Leicester is Jamie Vardy, 8.6K. You could probably get away with him in some GPP, uh, but definitely not cash. You do not want to use him in cash. He has no floor. Just uh, roll with him in GPP if you want. Maybe a Madison, G Madison Vardy, uh, will and Frazier, two extremely valuable stacks for a GPP and then super punt on uh, your defense. But uh, yeah, I don't see a lot of punting in defense this late. I'll just say that now. I see a lot of the 4K, uh, 4.5 to 5K defenders being super viable and the 5 to 5K keepers being super viable. So I just don't see a lot of reason to spend super down, which you would need to do if you're going to take a Madison, Vardy, Frazier, Wilson stack. So yeah, uh, you can definitely do that. It's just not... I'm, fade this game. Fade this game. I said it again. Fade this game. There's just going to be better options. Uh, so yeah. Jumping over to West Ham. Um, yeah, it's tough. Two goals allowed, two goals allowed, two goals allowed, three goals allowed, two goals allowed. Sorry, Fabanski. You're awesome. You're my dude. I like you. It's just, no, I'm not uh, I'm not looking for that this late against Leicester. Uh, and to further that, his defensive options are completely uh, void of DFS relevance. Maybe Ryan Fredericks, uh, if you're feeling a little bit risky, uh, 3.5K. Maybe Masuaku, if he gets the start and you're feeling a little bit risky. Uh, but, like, yeah. Uh, there's, again, there's just not a lot of reason to do this. Snodgrass may be in cash, maybe at 7.7K. But, again, like half his games he gets below double digits and you're looking at a few different options here that's like between 6.5 and 7k who are shoe-ins for double digits not to mention ryan frazier so yeah um just not a lot of reason for me to spend here and as usual the west ham issue much like southampton much like watford their minutes are just garbage so bad and it makes dfs almost unplayable because what ends up happening is that all their players end up coming off for each other uh so it will be interesting to see who is on the bench um yeah it, it'll be it, if west ham only have like one or two forwards total playing you can definitely consider this for GPP. But if they have like Lucas Perez and Ernie and Chikorito and Antonio all together in the same 18 squad, you can't do this. They're coming off for each other. So you're just cutting your legs out. Uh, there's no point in risking that. So yeah, fade this game. Uh, I will say 2-1 Leicester final score, but there's just no ceilings. Uh, and no real floors for tons of salary and too much ownership. So 2-1 Leicester final score. Next game on the slate, we have the last regular time game of this slate, and it is Brighton traveling to Wolves. So, yeah, Brighton has lost four straight. What's even more interesting, they haven't scored in uh, four straight games either. So, they're looking at nine times 360 minutes. I think my math serving me right. 360 minutes straight without scoring a goal. Um, they've conceded at least twice in three straight games. Uh, and more interestingly, they're probably not winning again this season. So Brighton for the rest of the season, they have to play city arsenal, I think Newcastle and, uh, Burnley or something. They're probably not winning again this season and they're being dragged into a relegation battle here. Br Brighton was never a really good team. What they always did well was at home. They were incredible. That was their deal. And that slipped a little bit this season. And now they're into a relegation battle and they're looking at a situation here where they're going into a game against Wolves that they need to win. Uh, the problem is they've lost six of their previous eight and seven of their previous 10 away games, winning only two of those 10. And those two were against Huddersfield and and Palace, two of the worst away, uh, two of the worst teams in the league, especially. Actually, let me rephrase that. That's literally number one and number two worst home teams in the league. 
across, literally. So yeah, that's probably why Brighton has won their th- those two games, and uh, they've conceded an insane, massive twenty goals in their previous ten away games, and thirty in their previous sixteen, uh, which is all their away games this season. They've conceded thirty away goals, massive, too much. Wolves is also coming into this in pretty poor form. Uh, they've won only two of their previous five and four of their previous ten. However, unlike Brighton, they're they're stellar at home. They've uh, they haven't lost in five straight home games, winning four of those five, and they've lost only three of their previous ten home games. So yeah, look at some Wolves this late. We'll quickly go through Brighton. Um, no, uh, that's an easy way to put it. Uh, you can, for GPP, I suppose, fire with a Matt Ryan. He's not the worst uh, GPP option uh, like the Fulham keepers are. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's not where I'm looking the slate at all. And a lot of that and the, the reasons is the, the defense. Literally the entire Brighton defense is defensive preferable. So they don't cross the ball. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Brighton rarely leaves their own half. And their their defense rarely leaves their own 18-yard box. Literally, watch a Brighton game. And what they do is, let's say this is the 18-yard box here. There's their four defenders. They literally sit on top of the 18-yard box. And then three feet ahead of them is their four and five midfielders. So, like, literally, they stuff nine guys into, or counting the goaltender, ten of the 11 guys are all inside that box. And most of the time, their forward is dropping back as well to, like, cut the field in half and make the other team choose one half the field to attack on, which is a soccer basic. You may not know that. That's a real-life player tactic. Basically, the forward's job is, is as a defender to cut the field in half to make the other team choose between the left or the right hand and you do not let the ball come back across because if you do that keeps your team starts going back and forth you get spread out and tired da, da, da. so uh basically brighton just sit back and let everyone shoot and cross and clear the ball that's what they do so yeah, uh, I'm not interested in defense. Grobe is really their main guy in the midfield, and he's coming back from injury, not seeing enough minutes, so I'm not interested in that. Solly March is literally the only viable option in all of Brighton, and he's actually a half de- de- decent option this slate. He's not my favorite play from 5.5K, but he's definitely up there. And if he was on literally any other team than Brighton away this slate, I would probably be playing Solly March 5.5K. He's even cash vibe. So if you're looking for someone to spend down on a little bit this slate and with a little bit of risk, Solly Marsh is definitely your guy, 5.5K. Don't sleep on him. Uh, but up front, they haven't scored in forever. They aren't probably going to score. If they do, they'll be lucky to get like 12 to 14 fantasy points off the goal. So yeah, there's no reason to look at a Brighton forward this slate. And to further that, jumping over to Wolves, um, really hard not to like Rio Patricia this slate. Now, I'll give you a little secret. Um... This weekend, this slate actually runs from Saturday to Wednesday. And if you're a season-long player, um, teams like Wolves this weekend get both they get two games. Uh, so if you're a season long fanatic, you definitely want to make a last minute transfer to get some Wolves guys in, specifically Rio Patricio, who makes the most sense. Uh, this slate, probably one of my favorite keeper slate plays at 5.5K. Uh, him and uh, Foster, uh, and uh, excuse me, yeah, him and Foster, basically my, my one and two, especially for cash. Uh, you can't go wrong with either of those two. Same salary. Rock, some Foster, or Rio Patricio. Easily the two best keeper options this slate for either format. Uh, now, I would probably take a little bit less Rio Patricio in GPP just because his defense isn't really viable for either format. So I'm more likely just to take Rio Patricio by himself in cash. Uh, Johnny is just no no floor, no ceiling. The same for Doherty. It's just not there. And then when you move into the midfield, it's a little bit different. And you find uh, a really serious lock this late. Jorge Matinho, 6.5K. Get him into your cards. Like, the guy is already cash viable. And then they lowered his salary, even though he got nine crosses and an assist against Southampton. And now they're going up against one of the league's worst away teams. And they've lowered his price. Furthermore, I think a lot of that has to do... Now, I will extend an olive branch here. DraftKings probably to get this right because um, Brighton allow a ton of shots and not a lot of crosses. Because they stack so many people in the box, 
there's just not a lot of crossing opportunities and people more likely take long distance shots or a nice little Nicky through balls. And I do like that this slate. I still think Moutinho is viable though. Uh, Cause he's going to get a ton of corners and set pieces. So yeah, get uh, Moutinho in there. 6.5 K uh, for GPP. I think you can go literally anyone. You can stack them. You can go anywhere across the board. I have a feeling, uh, considering Wolves play Arsenal again on a Wednesday, I think Tuesday or Wednesday, we're going to see a random couple starters here. Uh, so don't be afraid in GPP this late to use whatever Wolves start. They're going to be something random here. There's going to be something. Don't be afraid to use it. Uh, so yeah, that that's really my take on that. Um, Jimenez is one of my favorite forwards this slate. Probably keep him to GPP, though for cash, you can use him just because his goal props are so damn high. He's he's probably going to score two goals this late. I'm throwing that out there. He's my my choice for a two-goaler. Uh, so, yeah, uh, get uh, Jimenez into your GPP cards this late. Probably not for cash, but for GPP. And like I said, Rio Patricio, Foster, you cannot miss with those two. Uh, so, yeah, um, Final score, I'm going to say Wolves to Brighton nil. I'll be very surprised if Brighton scores, and I'll be very surprised if Wolves don't score more than once. So yeah, 2-0 Wolves, final score. Last game of the slate, we have Southampton making the huge trip up north to Newcastle. Uh, so yeah, Southampton are actually coming into this in really good form. They've won three of the previous five and four of the previous seven. They've scored in six straight games. However... They're fairly poor away. They've only won two of their previous five, and they've won only four of their 16 away games this season, losing nine of their 16. Half of their away games this season have had at least 3.5 total goals, and both teams score. Uh, so that's a pretty big deal when you think about it. So uh, Newcastle, on the other hand, have won four of their previous 10, six of their previous 12, kind of, uh, but they are incredible at home. They've won seven, or excuse me, seven of their 10 wins this season have come at home. They've won five of their previous six, and they've only drawn once of their 17 home games this season. That's important because the next stat is in their previous 10 games, in seven of them, a team was shut out. So, really, you're getting a result in Newcastle games. There's not going to be draws. And to further that, Southampton's like the draw kings of the English Premier League. That's all they do. They just draw, 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 year after year after year. Just 20, 21 ties at the end of the season out of like 35 games. It's obscene. So, um, I think a lot of people are going to be jumping on Southampton incorrectly this late. I'll just say that. Uh, let, let's uh, jump right in here. I like Angus Gunn. I always like Angus Gunn. Newcastle aren't a huge scoring team, so Angus Gunn is GPP viable. Um, to further that, Ryan Bertrand is an okay GPP play. Valerie's better. I like both of them in GPP, but none of them for cash. Do not play Southampton defense in cash. They just don't have the floor. James Ward-Prowse, really interesting play this this slate, 7.8K. I'm going to use him for GPP. I'm not allowed that interest in cash because Newcastle are pretty stingy at home, but for GPP, there's no real reason not to use James Ward-Prowse. Now, Nathan Redmond is a concern for me. Up until really recently, meaning last slate, uh, he consistently led the league year after year in like, getting the most scoring chances without scoring a goal. So, like, he's fine for cash if you want to use... Uh, let me rephrase that. He would be fine for cash if he was 6.2K. 7.2K is just absurd this slate. There's no reason to spend that much. That's a recency bias, recency bias pricing. So, you don't really want to jump on that. And uh, maybe Holberg, uh, if he gets the start for cash, uh, I don't hate that. Again, not my favorite play. And Josh Sims, obviously, he played last slate was incredible only 61 minutes but was more than enough uh to uh, help you uh do what you need to do in either format so yeah uh up front as always fade 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 um they just don't play 90 minutes and they're not, they're not very good so danny ings and charlie austin and shane long they're not scoring goals and they're not playing 90 minutes so there's just not a lot of reason to play them period so, yeah, jumping over to Newcastle. Now, I do like to bracket a lot. He isn't Rio Patricia or Foster, but he's definitely a top three keeper play for me this late. And a lot of that has to do with the fact his wingbacks are just awesome. Um, I think you can even use Yedlin in, in uh, cash this slate from 3.8K. I don't hate it. Definitely not my favorite cash play. I prefer the 4.55K range, but if you're looking to spend down, there's nothing wrong with Yedlin. 
to further that, Char is also in play uh, from 4.5K. Uh, again, Cash, uh, great option this late. Stack him with the Bracken GPP, take him by himself in Cash. Char is an excellent play, 4.5K. Don't sleep at him for a late hammer defensive option. Now into the midfield, this is the real gem of the slate. Uh, Matt Ritchie, 8.1K. Get him into your cards. The guy's just playing incredible. Uh, he's also DFS insane relevance. Um, far better at home than he is away. I'm really excited to use some Matt Ritchie this late. Um, as my late hammer, 8.1K. Cash or GPP, do not even worry. And then finally, up front, two different options for two different formats. You can either go Rondon and GPP, which I think makes a lot of sense stacking with Richie, 7.9K. I think that's a super stack to pivot off of the Lester Vardy Madison and the Bournemouth Frazier Wilson. Uh, those two stacks are going to be highly owned. Richie to... to uh, Rondon will not be. And then finally for cash. So yeah, I'll uh one of these two, whichever, like I said earlier, I'll just drop Janam for the sake of it. And finally for cash, uh, you're going to want Almira on this slate, 6.3k. Now, here's my spiel on Almira. Now a lot of people may look at this and say, Rob, you're wrong. And I'm gonna say, You're wrong. Here's why. Uh Amron hasn't scored a goal or an assist this season. That's where you're probably at home saying, Rob, you're wrong. And uh, that's correct. He hasn't scored a goal or an assist this season. However, he's been cash viable in all but two of his games. Three, let's say three, without these goals or assists. So, you can take him in cash and he's still going to do fine. If he finally manages to find find the back of the net, you're takedown instantly bam you're in takedown zone for either format doesn't matter one goal off of an almiron shot will catapult you to three times salary instantly instantly like instantly uh that's takedown viable in gpp and that's that is takedown in cash like if everyone in cash gets three times salary you are destroying Ever. no one's you're scooping 100 percent of your cash so yeah uh do not sleep an almiron on this slate 6.3k probably my favorite cash forward option for this slate so um in terms of a final score this one could be tough i think it's probably going to be something like a 2-1 newcastle win i don't see there being a massive scoring output like we could have from the other games especially like the first game uh but in terms of this I do like Newcastle for a shutout, uh, but even if they don't, I like them to score more than once. So, uh, kind of last last game, I'll be very surprised if Southampton, you know, no, a little bit different. I'll be very surprised if Southampton score more than once. I won't be that surprised if they score once. I'll be really surprised if Newcastle doesn't score, and if they don't score more than once, I'll be really disappointed. Uh, so, yeah, let's... Uh, Richie Locke with Frazier, uh, with Motinho. I think that's an incredible core. Uh, and uh, getting uh, Almiron up there as well is uh, really, really useful with uh, Mitrovic finishing it off. And then you can do whatever you want in the back line. I already talked on it briefly. But, yeah, this should be a really easy week to build. Really easy. Get whatever you want in there. You shouldn't have too much problems. So yeah, that is the video for today. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Rotopros.com. Get over there. Check us out. Top right-hand corner articles drop down. Check out all of our free contacts. Sign up Sign up for our Slack chat. Uh, we have a really good community on the go. Uh, baseball is crushing. Uh, lots of information floating around. So please uh, jump over there. Get involved. Um, I'm Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. That's rad like radical. Rad Rob Diamond. Uh, hit me up there with any questions. Like, subscribe. Subscribe, comment. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Hopefully see you at the top of the leaderboards. We're running out of King of the Pitch qualifiers. I think this is probably the last one this week. So uh, good luck to everyone. I hopefully see you at the top. Take care.